To understand financial inclusion, let us begin with the entire population, generally taken to be above the age of 15. Out of the population, part of them are already using formal financial services and are therefore included. So who are the excluded population? Among the excluded population, those not using formal financial services, some choose not to do so, either because of cultural or religious reasons or because they feel they have no need for financial services. One significant part of this group comprises those who have access to financial services through a family member and therefore do not need to have their own account. Another reason for voluntary exclusion could be a lack of trust or understanding of financial services. Who are the involuntarily excluded? The main policy arena will be in involuntary exclusion. Those individuals and firms that would like to use financial services but cannot. Out of these, some have insufficient income or are of such a high risk that a prudent financial system will exclude them. Among low-income excluded individuals are those who only demand small services, that is, small loans, savings, etc., that do not warrant the fixed costs implicit in financial intermediation. Why is financial inclusion important? Financial inclusion is essential in alleviating poverty and achieving inclusive growth. The benefits go beyond individuals and include firms. New evidence shows that financial inclusion for small and medium type enterprises is associated with innovation and job creation. 60 countries have set formal targets for financial inclusion and two thirds of regulatory institutions are tasked to enhance financial inclusion. Thank you.